Well, today we're continuing on in our series that we started last week on making sense of the Trinity. And what we're going to do in the next few weeks is we're going to break down the definition of the Trinity. Here's the definition. Number one, there's one God. Number two, God is three persons. And number three, each person is fully God. So Pastor Ross, we're going to just deal with that first part, right. that first part of the definition today. There is one God. Does that mean that Christians are not polytheistic? Well, exactly, because yeah. Christianity is birthed out of the womb of Judaism, the, mm -hmm. the Old Testament scriptures, which are strongly monotheistic. Yeah. Christianity is known as one of the monotheistic religions. And yeah. so um, birthed out of that, that clear Old Testament teaching, mm -hmm. then um, this is what the first disciples inherited. This was their strong, strong conviction mm -hmm. based on their Jewish roots and on the Old Testament scripture. There's one God, one God, one mm -hmm. God. And that's really clear in, in throughout, especially in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament as well. So let, let's take a look at some, some scripture from the Bible that affirms this part of the, of the definition. Deuteronomy 6.4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now, Pastor Ross, this is a passage that was would have been very familiar to yeah, the Jewish audience. Yeah, it was recited all the time. Yep. Yeah. And so it, it, this is the, partly because this is the heart of Judaism. Yeah. There's one, the one God, the one God who redeemed them, the one God who made them his, who entered covenant in, well, into covenant with him. Yeah. So there's one God, and it doesn't say just there's one God, but it says that that one God is a, a unit, a being, a unified being. He's yeah. He's... he's uh, he partakes of oneness or, or mm -hmm. unity mm -hmm. within himself. Mm -hmm. Another passage, uh, Isaiah 44, <clears throat> verse 6, it says, I am, God speaking, I am the first and the last. There is no other God. Now, to me, this would speak mm -hmm. to religions that say there are multiple gods right. and you can become a god and whatever. Right, exactly. So, you know, it's the only one. This is an absolute statement. He doesn't say, I'm just the one God for you people or I'm just the one God for this religion, or, or I'm just the one God that you have to deal with. Um, this is absolute, one God, period, no other gods. Mm -hmm. So Russ, I guess the question some people might be asking is why, why does it matter? Why, mm -hmm. why does it matter that there is one God? This first part of the definition, mm -hmm. again, in the next couple of weeks, we'll get into the other parts of the definition. This is probably yeah. the easiest one to understand. Yeah, right? yeah. There is one God, why does it matter? Well, it, it is interesting. It touches on a lot of different aspects of life and faith. Uh, there's only one creator. And what that means, so in the ancient world, each people group or nation had their own gods. And mm -hmm. so these gods are all in competition with each other. If there's just one God who made everything and who made all people, that means all of humanity is one. Mm -hmm. That we can't tribalize because there's just one God. It means that all of creation is one, it's unified. So all the, the laws that dictate nature and all the rest, there, there's only one set of, of principles, gravity and so forth, because there's just one God who made it all. Mm. That's one implication. Another implication is only one Lord. We're only answerable, there, we're not, I'm not answerable to one God and you're answerable to another God. Mm -hmm. There's only one Lord who rules the whole universe. Mm -hmm. There's only one God who's in control of history. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have a bunch of beings competing over what's gonna happen in life and in, in history in the future. Um, it's going, moving toward one purpose because there's one God who's guiding everything. Mm -hmm. So what, what does this say about other religions, Ross? <clears throat> uh, I know some people might, some Christians might be going through this series saying, I want to know what this would mean then if I'm trying to share my faith with someone else. Mm -hmm. If I'm sharing my faith with a Muslim, if I'm sharing my faith with a Mormon mm -hmm. or a Buddhist, what, how does this, does this impact the way I share my faith? At yeah, all? in the context of um, the Old Testament, this one God teaching was often to warn the people not to go following after other gods, the mm -hmm. gods of the nations around them. Mm -hmm. And so it's saying if there's only one God and one real God, because people come up with gods all over the mm -hmm. place, right? But mm -hmm. the New Testament in 1 Corinthians 8 says there's only one real God. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, it matters that I can respect somebody else and respect their beliefs, and maybe their belief in God reflects a lot about the one God. Mm -hmm. But if, but it, other gods, other claimants to be God, they're not the one God. Mm -hmm. they're, they're lesser concepts, and they're, um, they have to be, we have to gently steer people toward that one truth, that one central truth. There's only one God who created us, and so that means there's only one God who can save us. Mm -hmm.